Hi friends, welcome back and hello if you're new. Finally, we have sunshine here in the south of England. This week, I've been busy with an area of the garden that we call the kitchen courtyard. It's where the outdoor kitchen is. So this video is all about this area and in particular, the outdoor kitchen. Now, I built this last year and I didn't go out and buy any particular materials to do it. I just used what we had lying around. So I'm going to show you that and there'll be a little bit of cleaning, there'll be some planting and there'll be lots of styling. Let's get started. I picked up these red geraniums at the supermarket for just $1.99 and a selection of herbs for 75p and £1.20. Absolute bargain. All the geraniums are going to be planted up in these old biscuit tins, ginger thins from Costco. And here is where most of them are going to go. This is the outdoor kitchen that I built last year and it all started with this countertop that I found behind one of the sheds when we first moved into the property. Now the whole kitchen really needs a good clean. It's not been touched through the winter. I'm not a lover of cleaning. I've got to put that out there now. I'd rather paint a room than clean a room. Love a clean house, but absolutely hate the process of cleaning. Now this pink stuff is incredible. I've washed the whole outdoor kitchen with it and it's come up a treat. We really did build the kitchen out of leftover building supplies, things that we already had, and that was the challenge we set ourselves. The doors are actually made from very heavy duty pallets that the original cladding for the main house arrived on, and they were just too good to throw away. I used leftover timber to create the framework and each of the cupboards in inverted commas are just very practical spaces. I already had the barbecue which I'd bought on eBay for £190. It was on a stand so took the stand away, built a frame and popped it on the top. The camado or camado, let's just call it an egg, that was found at Aldi for a few hundred pounds and I actually built the housing for it out of breeze blocks and a drain cover. The counter surface around it is old paving stones. So here is the courtyard. Now it's a triangular shape, north facing but has sun in some part of it at any point in time in the day. The cane furniture was a charity shop find but I didn't like the cushions. So I'm using these old cushions from the house. They were originally grey and in the sun they've gone green. So they suit the outside but they are feather filled so I bring them in at the end of each day. And here's the first of our geraniums. And yes, I've gone with red to match the barbecue. The table in this area came from auction. It's oak, it's a gate leg table. And I wanted to leave it outside to weather down. I've also done this with some quite modern chairs that I bought oh, probably a decade ago, gone right off the style of them. So I thought, well, why just have them in storage? I'll pop them out into the courtyard and I've just let them weather over the winter. The old tray has been with me through many houses and had many different paint finishes. And I'm just adding some mint that grew from last year and some rosemary, coriander and a few terracotta pots. I got a job lot of them from auction, all different sizes. So they quite often get used in my outdoor styling. The shelving is oak and it was found in the house when we first moved in so I set that aside because I knew I'd use it at some stage. I'm adding some of my quirky vintage finds and yes that does include a metronome and a few red vintage books that have been out there all year. Buying the herbs at the supermarket is really good value because they cram so many plants into those little plastic pots that you just break them open and then divide them out into separate pots and they will grow all summer long. They may look a little bit floppy for the first week or so, but they soon get bedded in. And as these grow, I will transplant them into bigger pots as we go through the season. If you noticed in the cupboard under the sink, there was a step stool. That's because I can't reach this top shelf without standing on a stool. And obviously I need to get up there to water. I'm grouping different types of items together to create visual interest, but mainly they're there because I really like them. Every single one of these items, I have a story to tell. There is a backstory on everything in my home. I'm finishing off in the middle here with a selection of tins. Some of these are very old, some not so old. 
a couple of pots of rosemary either side and that finishes off that middle section. That's my outdoor kitchen shelf styling. The tap is made from bent copper and plumbing parts and I'm using an old jam pan as a sink rather than putting drainage in. It helped to keep the cost down and also it meant that I wasn't wasting water. We don't really use a lot of water in an outdoor kitchen. It's mainly hand washing or rinsing vegetables. So the water just goes out onto the garden, onto the plants. The stone looking planter is actually plastic. I do have a video on how I create this technique if you'd like to see. The sign here was bright red and in the sun it's just bleached away but actually it's got that lovely vintage feel and it is a very distinct message for my husband who will be saying no more about this. Thank you. This metal mirror was in amongst a job lot, one of my many job lots of mirrors from auction and it actually has a shelf at the bottom so it makes it perfect to sit on the countertop in this position. I'm adding a faux wreath here that will work for spring and into summer. So this won't need swapping out again until autumn. When it came to lighting for this area, I found some giant lights on eBay, which I'd bought some time ago. They were all covered in black paint, so I sent them off to my shop blasters to be taken back to the base metal. And for this one, I decided not to hang it, but to try and treat it like a lamp. So the electrician and I modified it. So we dropped some flex out and sighted an outdoor plug underneath. So we just plug it in. But I don't like to see outdoor plugs. I don't like to see any plugs. So I've got a picture from the house that I don't like anymore. And I'm going to use it out here. Lots of my things get downgraded from the house to the garden. To save on more drainage costs, I put the downpipe from the guttering into an old whiskey barrel, which is really handy for watering the plants. Now back to the stainless steel countertop, I'm just going to add a few more items here. Whilst I like to keep everything very neutral in the house, outside I love to add splashes of colour. I've got a stainless steel chopping board here, again another thing that's been downgraded from the house. And I use my crockery outside as well. And this vintage burlyware is my absolute favourite. The tea towel was a TK Maxx find, the jug from auction in a big job lot and flowers from my cut flower garden. The splashback that runs the full length of the kitchen is actually made from corrugated sheeting that I've used on the roof of the guest cottage. As you've probably gathered by now, I hate waste and I love to recycle, repurpose, reinvent materials in a new way. Through all the renovation works that we've done here, I've never used a skip. In the meantime, the sun has moved around the courtyard. Here are some trees that I've grown from cuttings and I've planted ferns in the Belfast sink. I bought these firs about three years ago to use in Christmas styling, tiny little things. Each year I just bring them back out after Christmas, put them into a bigger pot and they're now a couple of feet tall. They'll be coming back in the house for next Christmas and the pots will be wrapped in hessian. Young Bertie's on his best behaviour there, pretending he doesn't sit on chairs. My daughter's old university bike is in need of a new paint job and that will be planted up soon. The retaining wall around this part of the courtyard is made from sandstone. It was here when we moved in and has obviously been here for many, many years. This is one of my more unusual auction finds. It's a harrow and my husband hates it. But very shortly you won't see much of it because all the ferns will grow through it. And that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget thumbs up if you've liked it and chat with me in the comments below. I hope you'll join me next time. Take care.